Hi, welcome. Um, my name is Stefan Kraftchuk, and until recently I was the head of the model lifecycle team at Stitchfix. And I'm excited today to talk to you about scalable feature engineering with Hamilton on Ray. Now, uh, first up, I just want to say Hamilton is open source, and this is a short talk. So if I talk too fast and you miss something, uh, you'll find it in the documentation or examples. Um, so for those who don't know, like, uh, let's start with what is Hamilton. Uh, in one sentence, it's a declarative data flow paradigm. So it's a paradigm meaning you need to do things in a specific way. It's a data flow paradigm, so you're going to be expressing uh, how data and compute kind of uh, flow. And then, and, then, and then it's declarative in that it gets you to kind of really specify what outputs uh, your transform function is going to have, and then also, which also de uh, declares uh, the inputs required to uh, perform that uh, transform. Uh, so at a high level, you're going to be writing code in Hamilton in this paradigm. It's then going to be uh, creating a directed acyclic graph. And then from that, you can, uh, it's going to compute some sort of object for you. So as a user, you're going to write Hamilton uh, functions in this kind of Hamilton paradigm. You're then going to provide it to the framework. The framework is then going to build a, a DAG from it. And then you're going to ask, hey, compute something from the DAG. And for instance, it can create a pandas data frame for you. Uh, in terms of the paradigm, just to give you a, a sense of that, uh, so I have uh, two examples here. So the, uh, at the top, we have this old way where you're writing you know, procedural style code. Say this would be, this is pandas code where we're creating two, uh, two different columns. Uh, instead, with Hamilton, you would declare two functions to create these two columns. Now, these functions, we haven't said how they're orchestrated or they're executed. That's where some driver code comes in. So haven't, that's not shown here, but uh, I, I'll show that uh, shortly. Um, and so specifically, the, the kind of the mental mapping that you need to think about when you're uh, uh, thinking in the Hamilton paradigm is uh, anything that you are assigning to or creating, so in this, this case, creating column C, you're going to be declaring a function named C. And then the, the, the right-hand side to compute C, uh, the inputs, you're going to be declaring them as uh, uh, required function arguments uh, for the function named C. Then the, the logic is going to be within the function, uh, and then, so, so for, uh, for D, we can see in the original code, D depends on C. So in Hamilton, you would write a uh, function named D, declare C as an input, uh, specify the logic in the body, uh, and, and that's really all there is to it. Um, so what, 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 what is this actually doing? Um, so you can think of to create a DAG, we're actually modeling each function as a node in that DAG. So in this case, we have two nodes, C and D, because we have two functions. Uh, the function in input arguments then are specifying the dependencies. So C uh, requires A and B, so those are two dependencies. And then to compute D, we require C. Um, and then via the driver, which uh, I have code which I haven't shown you yet, uh, it constructs this DAG and then uh, it knows how to kind of compute uh, whatever you ask of it. So a full Hello World kind of looks like something the following. You write your Hamilton functions in a specific uh, Python module, and then you're writing some driver code, which will actually uh, uh, you know, orchestrate things to kind of um, say what should be computed. The driver code, essentially, all it's doing is importing you know, the Hamilton kind of driver module, and then uh, wherever, uh, whatever Python modules your feature logic happens to live into. So in this case, I named the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the top file uh, feature underscore logic, in which case we have to import it here. We're then constructing a, an, an object here, which we call a driver object, which instantiates the DAG, maybe takes in some configuration or some initial, uh, initial data. And then we're asking uh, 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 the driver to com compute hey, C and D, and then because we've constructed this DAG, it knows how to go away and compute a result. Um, so essentially, you know, uh, if you were uh, uh, translating code into Hamilton, so anywhere that you essentially have an assignment operator, you're essentially going to be writing functions. Those functions are going to uh, declare, uh, together, those functions are going to declare a directed acyclic graph. And then Hamilton's going to handle kind of executing and computing things uh, from it for you. So just to hammer home, you're going to write some functions. You're going to write some driver code. That driver code is going to create a DAG. And then it's going to know how to walk the DAG and compute a result. So that was, that was Hamilton in, in, you know, in a couple of minutes. Uh, so you might be wondering, why was Hamilton created in the first place? Um, so at Citrix, there was a, a team creating time series forecasts. Their flow looks something like the following. Uh, they created business actuals, uh, featureized the data, uh, uh, they got business actuals, created some features, and fit a bunch of time series models, uh, which predicted the future, and then they gave the business uh, a bunch of forecasts. 
Uh, the biggest problems happen to be with creating this featureized data frame, and this is why Hamilton was created. Uh, to give a sense of why uh, this was causing them issues, well, with time series forecasting, it's very easy to create very wide input data frames for fitting a model on the order of you know, thousands of columns. And that's because to create uh, more features and better features, essentially columns are functions of other columns. So uh, you can, over time, over the course of years, you know, it's very easy to accumulate thousands of these things. And the code base for managing this uh, was actually causing them a, 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 a lot of trouble. So just to try to ground uh, that, um, essentially here's a caricature of the script that essentially was running the featureization process. So at the top, we're actually loading some actual data. So we're loading you know, what was the marketing spend, how many signups do we have, and then uh, after that is basically we're creating a bunch of columns that you know, um, essentially creating our features. Um, you can say this, this code looks pretty innocuous, but I wanna say if you scale this you know, to thousands of columns and a growing team over the course of you know, four or five years, uh, you're gonna be, have a lot of spaghetti code. Um, and this actually impacts the, was impacting the ability for that team to scale and deliver more for the business. Um, so for instance, um, oh no, formatting. Uh, you know, testing and unit testing, this kind of code is actually uh, really difficult. If you have inline uh, uh, um, data frame manipulations, how do you unit test it, right? Um, integration testing is tough. If you add something, you have to run everything to get something. Uh, and then this impacts code reviews because you really need to understand the order of execution and what's happening. Uh, and then uh, onboarding and uh, debugging are also impacted and essentially you have to be a super tenured member of the team to really understand uh, the code base. Uh, so that was Hamilton and why it was created. So uh, what's, it been like, what's, what's it been like to use at Stitchfix? So it's been used at Stitchfix for uh, two and a half years. Um, the, uh, it manages over 4,000 uh, feature definitions for this one particular team. Um, and all feature definitions are unit testable, documentation friendly, and you know, centrally curated, stored and versioned in Git. Uh, the data science team that uses it loves it, uh, and it, uh, so they had a, a monthly uh, feature engineering and model fitting task that used to take them about on the order of a day. Uh, with Hamilton, it takes them less than two hours, so roughly in a 4x speed up. They found it's easy, on, easy to onboard new team members onto their code base, so uh, team rotations is, is now a possibility for them. And then they've also found that code reviews are much simpler and easier to kind of uh, get through. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of Hamilton. So how do, how do we think about it using Hamilton for feature engineering? Uh, so essentially the feature, you know, uh, the, the model fitting process is, kind of looks like the following. So uh, we want to, is the clicker going? Uh, so essentially we have, we're loading data uh, and transforming it to features and we're creating um, uh, 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 some features. We, we then you know, pass that into fitting a model and then we're using that model for prediction. Um, and so if, essentially, I just wanna say with Hamilton, you could model this entire process end to end, but the, for the purpose of this talk, we're just gonna focus on featureization. Um, and I have been using pandas here as an example, um, uh, but just want to kind of say that you know Hamilton works over any Python object type. So, but for this talk, I'm just going to all the examples are going to be kind of pandas based. Um, in terms of Hamilton itself, you know it doesn't replace an orchestration system. So if you want to do you know batch feature engineering, you would embed it within you know an orchestration system such as Airflow, Dagster, Prefect Flight, or you know Jupyter Hub Notebook. Um, and then uh, you can also uh, embed Hamilton in a uh, online web service since the dependency footprint is pretty small. Um, and uh, yeah. So, um, so modeling featureization with Hamilton. Essentially to get started, you need, you need to create at least two files. Uh, in the first file, we're essentially gonna be defining some functions that load data and your feature transforms. And then you're going to be uh, creating a, a, you know, a run.py, which essentially instantiates the driver, which instantiates the DAG, and then you're gonna be asking, hey, compute something um, uh, from the DAG for me. Uh, so, uh, so what's the code that actually needs to be written, just to hammer that home? So one, functions to load data. Uh, this is important because um, you need to kind of normalize uh, the, the, say, the column names that, that come through, since with Hamilton you need uh, um, variable names to be valid Python uh, uh, variable names. Uh, and then if you, uh, then you also need to create a common index for things to kind of join on together at the end. You need to write your feature functions. Uh, and then optionally, as I said before, you could model your entire featureization process with this uh, model fitting process if you wanted to. Uh, and then you're gonna be writing these drivers which will kind of uh, tell Hamilton to execute and actually materialize some data. 
Uh, you can model the superset of all possible features that you want and only request a subset and the DAG will only walk uh, and compute only what's needed. So graphically, you're gonna have some source tables. You're gonna write some functions that will load them in. Those functions then are gonna expose, uh, be exposed to some feature transform logic functions that you're gonna write. You're gonna write some driver uh, drivers that uh, will then, uh, you know, you'll specify what you want computed. It will walk the DAG and only compute what's required, and then you can uh, use that data frame for model fitting. So, uh, scalable feature engineering, so uh, Hamilton and Ray. Um, so, to talk about, I guess, scaling, we've got to first talk about some problems. So, um, at Stitch Fix, you know, the, the human team aspect was actually, you know, a big pain point. Specifically, the team was writing code that was uh, pretty highly coupled to their particular context. So being able to reuse those feature transform functions was actually kind of difficult. Uh, similarly, someone coming in to understand someone else's work was, was quite difficult. And then uh, if you're spending all your time uh, trying to uh, fix production and trying to make heads or tails of you know, what, what went wrong, you know, this also takes away from t the time that your team can be spending and scaling and, better, and building better things for the business. From the machine side, you know, this, is, this is probably the more, more common th thing that people think about that to what scaling is, you know, if, you, if your data is too big to fit in memory, you've got to figure out you know, how you can scale that. Similarly, uh, with Python, you know, everything is uh, a, you know, a single process, so if you want to um, scale throughput and essentially featureize things faster, you need to uh, figure out how you can parallelize computation. Uh, the good news here is that Hamilton helps, you know, with the human side of things. It really helps you know, structure and organize your, your feature engineering. And then Ray is a great fit for enabling you to, to, um, to scale to bigger data. So in terms of, you know, how does Hamilton help with, you know, like, uh, uh, the, you know, reducing highly coupled code? Well, essentially, as I said before, you're running functions uh, that are separate from driver code. So your, uh, your feature transform logic is very decoupled from where it's going to be executed. So uh, naturally, your code ends up being quite decoupled. In terms of, uh, because you have to curate things into functions, um, you know, it's much easier to reuse and understand people's work. Uh, you have to curate your functions into modules. Uh, those functions can be unit testable. Uh, document, you can use the documentation string for documentation. And then because of the way that you, the Hamilton works, you actually have to line on naming. And so naming always means something uh, useful with Hamilton. And then from, uh, if you have to debug things in production, since things do uh, invariably go wrong, with Hamilton, it's a very quick, easy mapping of output to finding where it's defined in the code base, since uh, you just have to search for that particular function name. Uh, and so therefore, debugging is pretty straightforward, since you know what the dependencies are declared as input, and so you can kind of methodically uh, debug your, your, uh, your DAG. Then, uh, since everything is curated into modules, if you, you know, version things with Git or create Python packages, it's very easy for you to then kind of uh, take snapshots of the world and you know, roll back if needed to. And then with Hamilton, it's also very easy to add some runtime data quality checks uh, to make sure that your expectations uh, in development are also being met in production. So, uh, so let's show you a Hamilton function. Um, so this is essentially, you know, the, the core uh, uh, abstraction that Hamilton's all built around. So here's a function you haven't seen before. I, I, I'll you know, give you a few seconds to kind of grok it. Uh, but I want to say, without having to tell you anything, I'm pretty sure you, you pretty much get the gist of it. Um, and I will even go as far to say that you probably wouldn't be too scared to inherit this if someone else wrote it. So specifically, just to hammer home a few points, you know, Hamilton is, uh, you know, functions are always unit testable. Here we haven't leaked how data gets to it, we just declared what inputs were required. So it's really easy to write a unit test. Um, documentation is pretty, is pretty good, you can use the function doc string. And then the, you know, the function name and the function input arguments are also generally named something useful, so it's very easy to kind of read what's going on. Uh, and then because we, we can build a DAG, we can also then you know, visualize it. Um, uh, and we also have then this, this app tag annotation where we can add some extra metadata, so it's pretty clear to see you know, who owns this function. Um, and then because everything is in functions, you know, this, this module can be reused in multiple different contexts pretty easily. Um, uh, and therefore, it's very easy to kind of, you know, reuse other people's work. And then, unfortunately, the, the, the formatting is kind of not showing here, but essentially, uh, as you can see here, you can also add a runtime data quality check. So, my, uh, you probably, I didn't have to tell you, but you could probably guess from the app check output annotation that what's it, what it's gonna do is that when you know, this function runs, it's gonna uh, check that the data type is a float, the range is between minus five and five, and that there shouldn't be any uh, none values. 
Right. Uh, so just to hammer home the kind of code base implications again, so functions are always in modules, and you're going to be writing these driver scripts that kind of uh, uh, map to the different contexts you want to reuse things, uh, reuse the, um, your feature transforms in. So you're going to, uh, what ended up happening at Stitch Fix was that uh, you ended up thematically kind of um, uh, grouping your feature transform functions, so all the spend features were on the spend features module, all the marketing features were on the marketing features module. And then you could have multiple uh, different driver scripts that uh, everyone for different contexts could easily kind of create a, um, um, to reuse uh, these functions. So essentially, with Hamilton, uh, you get code reuse from day one. And I want to say it's, uh, it's, it's pretty low maintenance to support many different driver scripts uh, just because there isn't any feature transform logic in them. So if there's something changes about how you load data, you know, there aren't that many places where you have to change things. Okay, so onto like, so how, how does, uh, it's connecting with Ray and scaling um, the compute and data side of things. So uh, as you know, as you're here, you know, Ray enables you to scale beyond your laptop. Right, so it's very easy to go from a single process to multi-processing to you know cluster scale type um, at work. Uh, in terms of uh, Hamilton's integration with Ray, it's built on top of Ray Core, uh, and we also have uh, Ray workflows are also supported. Um, in terms of you know you might be wondering, okay, what's required to switch to, to running Ray? And the good news is you only have to add about five lines of code in your in your driver code. None of your feature transform logic needs to change or be touched at all. Uh, from an architectural perspective, uh, just to give you a sense of just how things integrate. So again, uh, if you're running things on your laptop or you know, a single machine, you're going to be writing some you know, uh, feature transform code and some driver code that will instantiate a driver. As the DAG is walked, it's going to delegate to Ray, and Ray's going to you know, handle parallelism. So uh, it's a great way to kind of uh, not have to implement your, your, your own multiprocessing if you want to make use of multiple cores on, on your machine. Uh, and then it's very easy to kind of scale to, to, to cluster size. You're just going to change your array init to point to a cluster. Um, and essentially, uh, each function that you kind of write essentially will be distributed and handle, uh, and Ray will handle execution uh, for you. So in terms of, um, uh, just to give you a sense of like what is the actual change required. So here I have a vanilla kind of Hamilton uh, driver code. The, uh, the top parts basically are, you know, we're importing a, the driver module and then we're imp importing our, our data loader uh, functions and our feature transform functions. We uh, maybe have some configuration and then we're essentially instantiating the driver um, uh, with those modules, which will then build a DAG. We're then uh, specifying what uh, we want computed. Hamilton will compute the result and then we're saving that uh, to, 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 to some table somewhere. So to make this run on Ray, we just got to uh, import a few more things. So import the, the Ray module. Uh, you got to initialize Ray. You got to add what we call a Ray graph adapter. This will tell Hamilton, like, hey, as we're walking the DAG, we want to augment it. And then um, uh, we also then got to specify what type of return type uh, uh, we want. So in this case, we want a pandas data frame. Hence, we're providing, telling the Ray graph adapter, this is what we want returned. And then uh, you're just passing that in as a keyword argument to the driver. Nothing else needs, needs to change. And then once you're done, you're just shutting down. Right. Pretty simple. Um, so in terms of you know, how, how does this work, again, you're writing functions. You're going to be writing some driver code. Uh, the driver code essentially instantiates the DAG. Uh, as it walks the DAG, it's then going to be you know, delegating to essentially calling Ray remote. Uh, Ray will then handle the actual computation and execution, and then uh, and so very easy to scale Hamilton without you having to touch your feature transform logic. So in terms of caveats, um, so with Hamilton, uh, we the integration with, with Ray essentially we, we take all Ray's defaults. So if you're doing serialization, uh, we don't expose any custom serialization functionality yet. Um, so everything needs to be uh, Pickle Protocol v5 compatible. Memory, we also uh, just use the, the defaults. So if you need memory where scheduling, uh, we haven't exposed that yet. Uh, we would love to you know, collaborate with a few people to figure out what is the correct uh, user experience to kind of provide that uh, so that you know, we, we can tell Ray what to do. And then in terms of Python dependencies, uh, uh, in terms of a materialization run with Hamilton, we kind of assume that all Python dependencies are, are, are the same or that there aren't any conflicts. So that's something uh, you need to manage. And so with Ray, uh, you need to either you know, have it on the cluster already or specify those de dependencies when you um, uh, uh, start Ray in it. 
Uh, so Ray currently with, with Hamilton is you know, deemed an experimental status such that you know, we, we can at least uh, you know, change some of the APIs if we wanted to. So we're um, looking for people to kind of partner with and you know, extend and, or, or give us the thumbs up that hey, uh, this API works for us and you know, we want to use it. So with that, I'm just gonna uh, go over to my laptop and show you just a quick demo as to, uh, uh, you know, just to get a sense for yeah, what using Hamilton kind of looks like. So I'm gonna uh, try to give you a sense for what code looks like, you know, prove to you that, that, that the Ray integration works, uh, show you the visualization functionality, and then just give you a brief idea of like, what's the iteration cycle uh, to create a new feature with Hamilton. All right, so I have uh, a simple directory here with a bunch of files. So I have a CSV file, which has an absenteeism, absenteeism at work data set. So the task is essentially we're trying to create a, uh, a data frame for featureization that, will, uh, that we can predict who's gonna be absent at work. I then have a bunch of files, so I have a, uh, a, a data loaders module that will load the CSV. All my feature transform logic is in my feature logic file. And then I have you know, two run functions, one for vanilla Hamilton and the other one for Ray. Uh, so just to give you a sense of you know, uh, the CSV, looks, looks pretty standard, nothing uh, too uh, unexpected there. Um, in terms of the, data, the lo data loading function, here I have one written called raw data. Essentially it takes in a uh, location string, uh, then you know, reads the CSV, sanitizes the columns to make sure that the column names are, are valid ver uh, Python variable names, creates an index so that we can join uh, everything together on the end and returns a data frame. We then have some syntactic sugar here that basically says, given this data frame, I wanna kind of expose and extract some columns. And in which case we specified here, essentially what, um, what columns we want downstream features to have access to. Uh, and so then moving to the feature logic file, I have some uh, you know, feature functions defined. As you can kind of see here, they all look pretty nice and, and uniform and that's you know, a result of everything being in functions. Just to kind of dig into to one of them, here I have uh, defined a feature called has children. It takes in you know, an input called sun, which is one of the columns from uh, the CSV. I then put it asleep here just to prove that when, I, when we parallelize things with Ray, things will, be, uh, uh, will, uh, will speed up. Uh, it's returning essentially you know, ones and zeros and specifying that uh, um, it, yeah, everything should be an integer. I have added a checked output annotation and here I'm using a uh, Pandera schema to kind of define it. And essentially uh, the expectation is everything should be an integer. Uh, everything should be in the value between zero and one, and there shouldn't be any, any null values. And similarly, there are uh, you know, uh, uh, other features defined. So in terms of uh, just quickly running things. There we go. So I'm gonna run the uh, vanilla Hamilton uh, driver as well as the, the Ray one. Um, uh, the, the script, as I'll, sh I'll show you in a second, essentially is just you know, requesting uh, six columns, and then uh, uh, essentially printing the, the head of the data frame. Just to prove here that you know, Ray integration works, you can see that the execution time uh, is, is faster with Ray because it was actually paralyzed over the multiple cores of my CPU. And you can kind of see here an eyeballing that the, the feature results are the same. Uh, in terms of uh, added functionality here, I've actually, uh, you, yeah, uh, the, the, the point is here, it's very easy also to visualize the execution path of computing these features with Hamilton. You didn't have to do anything, you just gotta kind of specify it as an option. Uh, in terms of, uh, just to show you the difference between the two driver files, as I said before, you only have to add a few lines of code. So here I have a diff between them, just showing uh, the right-hand side with Ray, we just gotta import a few more things, initialize Ray, and create a Ray graph adapter. And then uh, uh, for Ray, I'm also been visualizing uh, uh, output. So we have a function called visualize execution that does that. Uh, and then, and, and, and so that's really the difference. So to give you an idea of, uh, okay, I wanna create a new feature, what do I have to do? Uh, well, I have a, you know, a feature pre-prepared here. Uh, so essentially you would write your feature and if you wanna be uh, you know, software uh, dri development driven about it, you could, you could be test driven. So you can, it's very easy to kind of go in and write a unit test so you could develop features in a test driven way if you wanted to. But uh, at, at, at Stitch Fix, what generally happened was instead they would just go ahead and you know, add this feature to uh, uh, their, their, their driver file um, and just to um, 
you, you, uh, just to show you the, the, the flexibility in terms of how you could test things. With Hamilton, if you, do, if you don't want to compute something, you just remove it from the output. So just to uh, show you that this is going to run, um, it will yeah, show me only, I only requested you know, two outputs and I requested a graph of the computation to be made. So, um, uh, and so it's really that easy to kind of, you know, add a new feature and test it and ensure that it's working. Uh, as you saw, that was, that was pretty quick. So, uh, so that's all I had for the demo. Uh, feel free to, you know, ask me questions afterwards, but um, if we go back to the presentation. Uh, so in short, uh, just to kind of, you know, uh, finish up my talk. Uh, so Hamilton, you know, gets you to write these functions in this kind of declarative paradigm that enables you to declare a, a data flow. Um, and it's, it's a micro framework in that it, it's embeddable that uh, you, you can put it anywhere that runs Python. Um, it grew out of the need to tame a feature code base. And uh, I, you know, I'm excited about using it, so, you know, please take, a, take it for a spin and let me know if it makes your code base better. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Hamilton essentially helps the, a team scale their feature engineering process through, you know, making software engineering best practices uh, something that's really comes easily and natural. Uh, and so, Hamilton with Ray enables one to not only, you know, scale the human and, and team side of feature engineering, but also scale uh, the data and compute side. So, uh, Hamilton's open source. We'd love for you to give it a try. If you like it, give us a star on GitHub. Else, you know, vote and create issues, and then we have a fledgling community on Slack that would like that would love for you to join. Uh, thank you, and would love to take questions. <laughs> Mike's coming. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your talk. Uh, maybe you can briefly describe how does it work under the hood? Uh, like, do you materialize the intermediate results, or is it like some iterator stitching or something like that? Uh, so, with the Ray integration, we just we delegate it all to Ray. So it's really um, you know Ray ends up scheduling it and, and figuring it out. But essentially, all, and everything's materialized into memory at least. Um, and okay, so you, if you if you're looking at the graph, like so, every node there will be materializing its result. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, uh, you could say with Hamilton, it's also e very easy to uh, 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 make sure that things are immutable, since there's only one, one way to compute them, and that but that results in uh, you know things being uh, each function essentially re results in something being materialized into memory. Okay, thank you. So when you build the DAG, some of the Operators could also run in parallel, right? Do you do like parallel compute? Uh, so with, with vanilla Hamilton, you know, uh, there is, uh, uh, it's, it's not parallel. But if you switch to using Ray, then, you know, by, by means of scheduling, ha ha Ray will ensure that, hey, if there are, uh, as, as we walk the DAG and we you know, schedule things in a, in a parallel manner, then things will actually uh, happen in parallel. Um, uh, have you tried to uh, use this in the online serving side for the Hamilton library? Uh, so, so you can, from a perspective of you know, sharing feature definitions, you could use the same, same definitions in batch uh, and then put them into serving. With serving, there is you know, a, a couple of uh, you know, caveats in terms of if you have aggregation features, you probably need to provide them as uh, hard-coded, as, as values to Hamilton so that uh, they're, they're already provided for execution, but it's very, you know, it's very possible to, or at least easy to do, to um, uh, embed Hamilton within a, a web service framework. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my second question. My second question is about the benchmark and the performance. Uh, have your team like hit the performance problems, and then you try to use Ray to scale it? And have you done any performance benchmarks between and after the migration? I, Good question. Uh, no, but uh, I mean, anecdotally, uh, if you 
because um, it's such like most of the data you know fits in memory, so in which case um, uh, it's really multiprocessing that we've you know tried to use and, ma and make use of. And so I want to say it really depends on your on the DAG that you build. And so uh, I mean I, I would love someone to, to do the to do that benchmark and actually tell us because I think that's an interesting story. Um, since uh, you know Hamilton by itself is not meant to like increase performance, but you know uh, since it's, since it's essentially just trying to ensure that uh, you can you know, maintain and define your feature transforms that you know. Uh, live beyond you when you kind of leave your company. Cool. I think we're good. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming.